Introduction One of the biggest mysteries of the OP verse is still Luffy's mother. The only thing we know is what Oda mentioned in an interview released in American Shonen Jump back in 2009. The description fits perfect with Dayton and if we look at the rest of the interview it also makes sense. Dayton was introduced in April 2010 and maybe Oda decided to use the description for Luffy's mother someone who played Luffy's mother. I mean Dayton is a very tough looking and strict person, she is definitely not a beautiful mother and she has got this typical middle aged woman's permed hair. That's why would say we have no clue who Luffy's mother could be. Recently I came up with the idea that Kuma's sister could be Luffy's mother. I know it's very speculative, because we don't even know if Kuma has a sister, but it would work perfectly with the current story, if you are interested, read on. Double Agent Kuma After Frankie revealed what Kuma said to Rayleigh, everyone knows Kuma was a revolutionary army commander who infiltrated the government as Shichibukai. Chapter 603 and to get as much information as possible, he paid a high price, his own life. He let himself step by step turn into a weapon, ending up with losing his own will and mind so he ends up dying and his body becomes a weapon of the enemy. Chapter 530 The big question is, why did Kuma save Luffy multiple times and what are his reasons for this? Kuma and Luffy We all can agree without Kuma, Strawitz wouldn't have survived Sabodi. He came there not only giving every Strafat his own past. He also protect them from an attacking pacifista. Chapter 513 Some may think he risked his mission at this point, but I would say he already completed his mission as double agent, because his time was already over and a few days later he already turned into a mindless weapon. So he might have just saved them, because Luffy is Dragon's son. But it's not the first time Kuma risked his mission for Luffy, back on Thriller Bark Kuma was ordered to kill Strawitz and everyone who saw that Mariah got defeated. Chapter 483 But instead of fulfilling his orders he just tested the Strawitz and let everyone survive. After just telling Sengoku everyone managed to escape, at this point the world government could have lost trust in Kuma. Chapter 490 at this point many would agree that Kuma indeed risked his mission for Luffy, but may also ask what's the difference between what he did and what Ivankov did. Ivankov never planned to escape, he wanted to wait till the right moment. Chapter 539 But after he found out Luffy is Dragon's son, he turned the plan over and decided to help Dragon's son. Chapter 539 and they are right there are similarities, both risked their mission to save the family of their leader. But some may have noticed a big different between Ivankov and Kuma. Kuma knew that Dragon has a son, Ivankov not, after Kuma tested the Strawitz, he made it clear that he knows who Luffy is. Chapter 485 Some may say, it's because Dragon trust Kuma more, but I think that is wrong. It looked like both were members, commanders of the revolutionary army from the beginning. Chapter 587 And that Dragon wants to explain Ivankov, what happened Kuma, just show Dragon trusts Ivankov a lot. Chapter 593 And it looked like Vegapunk granted Kuma one last wish by turning him into a mindless weapon. That he is allowed to protect the Sunny until the return of the Strawitz. Chapter 603 How does this all fit? To answer that question let us look for reason, why Kuma might go so far to give his own life to destroy the world government. Kuma detested the world government. Ivankov's reaction after Doflamingo told him what happened to Kuma, that Kuma detested the WG. Chapter 530 But why did he detest the WG? I think one hint gave us Mariah, he called him Tyrant Kuma once they met on Thriller Bark. Chapter 474 could it be that Kuma was the ruler of a kingdom that got destroyed by the WG? Definitely. That would also explain, why Kuma had to make that deal and become step by step their mindless weapon to get the trust of the WG or not. I mean under normal circumstances they could never trust anyone whose kingdom they destroyed. So, if we assume he was a ruler of a kingdom, it is also possible that he had a family, which got killed by the destruction of the kingdom and to revenge his family he sacrificed his own life. But would someone like this risk the plan just to save a kid that has nothing to do with the raw, even if it is the son of their leader? 
I have my doubts about it. But if Luffy is his last living blood relative, it would make sense and gives everything Kuma done for Luffy more depth. It also explains why he is the only one knowing that Luffy is Dragon's son. That's why I came up with the idea that Kuma had a sister, his sister was Dragon's wife and Luffy is his nephew. The destruction of Kuma's kingdom could also have been the beginning of the revolutionary army. Conclusion Oda used the description of Luffy's mother to create a person who played a mother role in Luffy's life, Dayton. Kuma was once the ruler of kingdom and had a sister who was Dragon's wife and Luffy's mother. Kuma's kingdom was destroyed by the kingdom the only ones who survived were Kuma, Dragon and Luffy, Luffy was then given to Garp. Dragon founded the revolutionary army after the destruction of Kuma's kingdom and the death of his wife. Kuma went on a suicide mission to revenge his family and kingdom. During his mission he also watched over his nephew Luffy, his last blood relative. How do you think about? Asterisk theory by Nessos.